Hey everyone, welcome back to another Stone Face Reactions. I'm Theta, this is Lessons, and we're here with episode 4 of Macross Plus. Events are about to happen. Why don't you tell us what they are? Well, uh, last episode, basically everything went to the crapper. Because, one, Sharon Apple woke up. She got installed with a secret AI chip from the military, and apparently that has altered her to the point that she's fully... Uh, well, sap sapient, not sentient, uh, AI, and uh, but me and this all this happens in on Earth because they're going for the 30th celebration of the end of the war, Space War One. Uh, at the same time, we uh, a new project has been unveiled, which is a Ghost X9, which is supposed to be the next generation next generation fighter for the UN UN Armed Forces. Of course, this is also an AI. Um, type drone and the current yf night 17 versus y yf 19 project gets canceled yf 21 that, versus yf 19 okay yf 19 versus y 21 i don't want to say 117 yeah because i'm confusing it with the f-18 and the i mean you're 16. almost jumping 100 sure. generations into the future yeah um and uh that gets canceled which doesn't sit well with isamu after he Basically, gets out of the hospital for the what the injuries that he suffered in the end of episode two. Arguably, also Newman, who also because mm -hmm. he's the project manager of the YF yeah nineteen, and so they they steal the YF nineteen in order to stop the or to show that they are better than the the X nine X nine. So now we have a race uh, of who can machines. get to Earth. Uh, YF nine YF nineteen with Isamu and Bowman no and Newman. Going to Earth, followed by Bowman in the IF-21, while Myung is now a prisoner of Sharon Apple, and the concert to celebrate the end of the war is about to begin. I guess also, arguably, Bowman is chasing after Osamu. So, is that, Bowman is yeah, not Bowman, regard, Bowman's not regarding the X-9 as a thing, whereas Osamu yeah. is. So it's like a whole chain of attack targets. I will say, though, I'm on the side of the X-9, obviously, since I literally said I don't know why they're not just doing automated drones instead of piloted machines. Hell, even in the first episode, when I didn't even think about the uh, drone aspect, I'm like, why does he need to be in the cockpit? Why isn't he just controlling, brain-controlling this thing from far away? Especially when we've already I mean, seen that his eyes and ears and everything are all sensed in to the, uh, the, the aircraft anyway. I mean, you can always jam the communications and lose control of the aircraft. Sure. So why not just do drones then? <laughs> Which is why we're here at the 9, the X-9. It's even got a cool name. Look, I can't fault the thing either way. I hope you saw me get shot down. Okay. Look, I'm not tied to the character at all. The backstory is very confusing. They haven't explained what happened seven years ago. My best theory is still Bowman didn't take his medication. And had a freak out. But then we had the outside of the hospital scene where literally Myung gets punched in the face. And it's like, well, maybe that's just what happened. They were arguing back then, but now her clothes get all torn up. There's so many fucking angles to this that I am just uncomfortable with our main characters. And less Myung. I've got no real problem with Mae Young. She's a normal character with normal problems. And I could yeah. see having her own slice of life show, if, you know? She could have. Myung and Sharon, road trip, you know, whatever. But <laughs> if Sharon didn't want to substitute her and, you know, take oh, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Myung uh, and Sharon, yeah. episode one, not episode three or four. <laughs> Who yeah. knows what's going to happen. Um, my, my point being is that I'm. I had problems with Hikaru. I had problems with Misa. I had problems with Min May. But at the end of the day, they weren't so uncomfortable as to not have, like, I could spend time with them, right? If I was in the world, I could be like, hey, Minmay, what are you up to? You want to hit up the the uh, the karaoke bar, that place that everyone goes to? You know, I could see myself existing around these characters. These people are like Melrose Place. This is this drama, <laughs> and it's yeah. hard to, like, want to even ingratiate yourself with. I just feel like if I was in the room, they would be, like, sulking in a corner. Like step away from having an emo haircut. Like, it's just hard to deal with. So, that's my I'm, point. That's what it, I'm saying. I have no problem with being shot down because I'm not tied to them. 
Yeah, I mean, it's um, the 90s, you know, darker and edgier version of, well, everything. In this case, Macross, so there's that. Aeon Flux could walk through the room and she'd feel right at home, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's a weird feeling. And I don't want to watch a show that gives me weird feeling. <laughs> that sounds weird. That sounds like something teenage me would say. Uh, <laughs> I don't. W- I want to watch a show where I'm like making fun of the characters, not because they're so off-putting that that's the only thing I feel like a recourse to do, but because they're fun. I like having fun with these characters. When Misa and Min Mei are arguing about who gets to be with Hikaru, it's like this is dumb on a relationship level, but it's fun dumbness. When these two are arguing about who gets to be with uh, Myung, I have concern that Myung is going to get stabbed so the other one can't have her, right? Like, this is uncomfortable lifetime movie level of, I am concerned for this woman's safety. So, I don't know. I, I'm just boiling back to the same subject every time. Again, it's not that I don't like the show. The show has so many levels and depth to it that uncovering everything that's happening at any moment is interesting. So, it's just the characters I hate. Well, you have any other thoughts before we get into this? No, I think this is going to be... Well, again, and I will say that, you know, I've always said I, I, I get into this because of the robots, but I do stay for the characters. And even if these characters are jackasses, I still find them to be interesting. Because I want to know, or I wanted to know, and I kind of know because I already watched it. I, I liked what happened there and, and the fact that they were tackling, or at least attempting to tackle, more adult situations. So when I watched it, it was like, oh, hey, this is Macros growing up, right? This is people dealing. They're not like, oh, you love me. But no, it's like, listen, trauma happens. People change, you know, why people don't talk to each other is not because they're like, oh, well, if I tell him he's not going to like me kind of thing, or, you know, can you pass me the note? It's more like, hey, you hurt me, or this happened, or this is, you know, there's some real, at least feels more adult, more real situations, right? The fact that that the Goldman is dealing with a genetic condition, he has to take drugs for it, right? Right, and it, and he's trying to make a life out of himself. The fact that Isamu seems to be a lost soul, right? Somebody who also had dreams, but now seems to be just like going on automatic. Like I just want to fly and I want to forget about anything else because I can't deal with the reality. Miyun coming close to her own dreams of being a singer, but settling for something less than that, being a you know puppeteer as he calls it, right? Uh, which she doesn't find satisfying, but because she felt that she had to give up on her dreams, right? and be something else. Which, by the way, in the Japanese situation, that can be seen as a failure because there's the, what's called the gambate, gambate spirit, which is a, uh, I mean, if you're a Japanese viewer of this and you hear me say that and you go like, actually, yes, you're right. I'm Statistically, 25% what. of our viewers are Japanese, so. I'm, a, I'm giving you my outsider perspective and as it has been described to me is that essentially people should strive to be and whatever they want to do, they should be the best they are at. So if you're a fighter pilot, you want to be the best fighter pilot. If you want to be the singer, you want to be the best singer, right? Finding that thing that you're good at and is what you're supposed to be. And then a couple of times they used to use the word as well, right? For ambition or, or want. And the one thing that seems that all of them are struggling with is that they're not fully what they really want to be. Yes, Isamu is a fighter pilot, but he doesn't want to go up in ranks because that means he stops being a fighter pilot, right? In lieu of whatever he thought he wanted to be, which I get a little bit of a Hikaru vibe in, in the beginning where he just wants to fly as opposed to be a fighter pilot. I don't know. Hikaru right? was really happy to get promoted every time. No, no, but... Except for the one that involved they... people dying. Well, yeah, and also Hikaru was also trapped for a long time between being a, ci- a flyer, a civilian flyer, and a member of the military. It's not until the very end he says, you know what, I am... Uh, a member of the military. This is who I am, right? Uh, Mi Young is, again, she fails to be who she wanted to be, or everybody expected her to be, to be this great singer, right? Uh, and now we have Sharon saying, hey, I'm you, I'm better, I am the fulfillment of who you are, right? Uh, and then you have Gold, who 
yes, he's become a fighter pilot, uh, you know, private because he works for the comp uh, test pilot, but he has to struggle with, you know, his condition, right? And losing control. And I think he feels that he has to get to, he has to win in order to prove it to himself that he is the best, right? He has reached that spirit. He has to get the girl. Now he's playing it straight in many ways. He's playing the romantic lead straight. He is, I have to win the contest and I have to get the girl in order to win the story, right? While Isam is saying, screw the story. I just want to be myself, right? And Myung is like, reality is that not everybody gets what they want. And, and I wish you two would grow up and realize that. I think it's the element of the past that's hanging over them that we are not addressing. Mm -hmm. That is my end up problem. Because I feel like I would really enjoy this story if it took place seven years ago where they're all still friends getting along and then this thing happens that causes them to go their separate ways and dealing with that as it was instead of having it hanging over our heads as this mystery and we're past it now and trying to deal with it. I feel like there's a thing that happened that I'm not being told that is making it harder to to follow the characters. Like you just said, everyone's motivations and where they are and what they're doing quite clearly. So you clearly are in the realm of the show much better than I am. But I'm having a hard time with that past element. That past yeah. element is clearly changing the characters or has changed the characters in such a way that they have motivating conditions operating on them, which is changing what they would normally do, I feel like, in that scenario. Which is why, again, like I said, I'd be happier if this was placed seven years ago at the moment of or just before and then into rather than this, because that's the problem that I'm having. Yeah, that's, that's my take on it. All right. Well, with that, then, I think we should just go ahead and get on into it. But before we get started, make sure that you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, comment down below to feed that algorithm. On top of all that, if you want to watch more shows like this, unfiltered, uncensored, and uncut, as well as some early access stuff, you can check it out over on the Patreon. It's just $5 a month, but hey, no pressure. There's zero pressure in order to do that. It's just a little bit of extra support, and it would be greatly appreciated. All right, ready for a shitstorm of combat. Hmm. Possibly AI terrorism. <laughs> well, I don't know what she's going to do with a coliseum full of people, so. Other than your implication that she's going to attack them with the Macross. <laughs> One use? That has disastrous implications. Well, you know the target. Yeah, and then what happens is you get stranded out there. It's well, just the fighter right. craft. Yeah, but I mean, it's like, if you just want to uh, move ships around and stuff like that, it might be useful. Well, no, remember the point was that they wanted it for combat use. So that your, yeah, your fighter forces will be able to jump in on an enemy. So that means that they won't be able to jump out. <laughs> For their own safety. It might, it might turn out to be like the rings in, in Star Wars, right? The, 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 they would dock with the rings and jump. He just jumped, ejected it. I know, I know, but that might be an experimental system. Change the uniforms, but not the hats. I mean, they did outlaw this very specific kind of biochip that would allow Sharon to even exist. So in some aspect, humans have already declared war against AI.
でも内部だと。What, did it take over all of the carriers in orbit, too? Only the satellites. Well, the satellites are aiming down towards Earth, right? But the carriers are already aimed towards Earth, which means... I don't know what it means. Either they are just orbiting in that way, or they saved budget by just having them pointed down already. I wonder if his fake share is going to come into play. Oh man, I wish I had that suit. <laughs> the one just puts you to sleep whenever you want. <laughs> Not to buy International Space Station. Does he even know where the X-9 are being tested at? I think so. Just said Earth last time. No, it would be, no, because it would be unveiled during the concert. He knew that. Right, that could happen anywhere. No, no, but it has to happen here, because that's all the brass is everywhere. I mean, we have these giant-ass display screens all over the place. No, but they're actually going to see, you know, they're going to administrate the actual, uh, you know, hardware. Well, I mean, if Sharon is after him, then... I don't know. This is somebody's pink, by the way. <laughs> I was thinking, would Sharon have the presence of mind to know that Isamu wouldn't want the X-9 to be a thing? Would she just crash the drones? They know what they're doing with butt shots and stuff like that. You know this clip exists on Pornhub somewhere. You know what I think is amazing is the fact that with the uh, like drone light shows, this isn't even that impressive anymore. <laughs> Let me think about it. She's barely even moving. This is just a light projection. Yeah, but she's doing more than that. Look at the people. I think that in the 90s, these people would have amazed at a light show that doesn't move. I'm just saying oh. today we have a light show made of drones that's like a moving fucking dragon doing... Yeah, yeah, but she's doing more than that. She's not, though. No, I don't mean the drone, the movement. I mean the effect on the people. Well, I mean, I have no idea. All I see is a non-moving statue and people that are amazed. It reads... Oh. Come on. Yeah, somebody's doing the whole... My point is, is I don't think it's sufficiently advanced enough to make... Like, if I went and did a drone light show in front of the Amish, like, I just mean, some people would be amazed at anything. No, it's... <laughs> like, I would get it if they... She said, okay, now I'm pumping in pheromones into the area or something. It's just light, man. I don't know what you think is happening. You're about to find out. Gardo. 
族な野郎だぜ人の後ろばっかちょろちょろついてきやがって<笑>I hate to say it because it's gonna sound weird, but I think you could take a piss anywhere in this room and ruin everything. <laughs> well, it's all electronics, right? It seems to be unshielded electronics. They're complaining about. Well, I don't know. He said because you ran off seven years ago. At least that. At least that's something addressing my problem with the narrative between the relationship. It's almost like a uh, Pat Lamore move to it. I love it when the animation is such that some things look so different, you know they're going to be destroyed in a minute. Things where we're gonna have to come together to fight the X Nines, and they're gonna put all their differences aside. They realize what their friendship meant to each other in a long time. <laughs> About how many people we are killing with our stray bullets. And then, man, finish your fucking thought. I want to know what. So everything I thought about Asamu, but Bowman. Or 
my thoughts from before episode three. No. In that he mistook something that, you know, that what they were doing, he lost control and, yeah. you know. I mean, basically what I said, I said I didn't know what the fight was about. Oh, come on. And because of your unreliable narration, I've hated Asamu for three episodes. I guess he's been radioactive this whole time. I mean, radio... active, not radioactive. Oh. Well, I mean, to have heard everything he just said. shot. But he didn't tell the audience. お前が作っ This all makes sense for an OVA. If this was the end result of a TV show, I would be so yeah, much be more fun. angry right now that the whole thing was unreliable narrator. And I'm already unhappy with this was just I locked out my own memory. Because that's... But at least I fucking know what happened. I mean, I, I like it. It's not- I'm not satisfied with the twist because I had to believe something for three episodes that this resolution does not make me happy about. At the very least, I have the share an apple thing to pay attention to. It, that's at least been a good focus. Uh, what? Oh, yeah, your thing. Sorry. Again, just more sense that's not making sense to me because we haven't introduced it as a concept yet, have we? Yes, it's what happened on the concert. You remember the no, concert? No, no, not that. Where... Okay, but they didn't explain what was going on there, that something was happening. Isamu was looking around while everybody was, like, mesmerized. He noticed. He was the one who wasn't affected. Right, because he doesn't know anything about Cher and Apple. But everyone else just seems like, have you ever been to a concert full of tweens? Yeah, yeah. It, this does not look anything different to me. Except that what she's doing is actually she has hypnotized everybody. Right. Well, that doesn't become self-apparent. It just looks like a bunch of really weird people at a concert. 
like I said, they didn't show like a screen that said something or somebody had like an adverse effect to the hypnotizing thing and then the doctor said no, something about it. Because in the concert, remember she's adjusting her her performance to how she can read the audience. And apparently she has the ability to do that in such a way that it, she uh, she can actually hypnotize people. Right. Again, that was not implied to me. I just saw a bunch of druggies at a concert, which is just fucking normal. Again, I compared it to a Pink Floyd concert. What kind of people do you think attend a Pink Floyd concert? People that can take drugs and watch a light show. That well, looks like all of that. At this point, though, I'm just calling the obvious shit. ただの I also have to ask what makes Sharon a good pilot. I mean, she just directs her, uh, directs it. She takes control of the AI and the AI will just do, you know, try to kill them. That's all. Right, fair enough. Yeah, she doesn't have to, you know. Well, I thought she was taking direct control over it, in which case, I mean, she's, it not, is, but... she's not programmed to be a pilot. Yeah, she doesn't have to be programmed to be a pilot. She just let the A tell her, these are your targets, kill them, right? Also, how would these guys be hypnotized? They're not even outside. Yeah, remember, he hit all the screens everywhere. Oh, hey, look, we got back the... Uh... No, those are the anti-gravity devices, remember, that ripped themselves yeah, no. out. Okay, sorry. I thought you were going to say the fold, because we've talked about that before. No. Oh. I guess they refined the tech at some point, too. Yeah. I mean, they did repair her. That or it doesn't rip itself out when you're in uh, transformation mode. This guy's just going cuckoo, basically. Yeah, I wouldn't be standing on the outside of the ship while it's lifting off. Man, I, as much as this is uh, a thing, this is the ultimate weapon against the Centrati, though. Well, I mean, literally, it's a giant singing woman in space. Uh, he rolls crazy. There's no explanation for committing suicide. Oh, well, like, you know, he could have been commanded by Sharon to do that. Well, I mean, not before he gave Sharon the ability to command him. No, no. Yeah. Catch 22. That was uh, that, yeah. That's it because he's stupid. <laughs> but I mean literally this is just the embodiment of culture in an AI. Now the AI has control of a ship. Send that thing at the Centrati and they're not going to know what the fuck to do. <laughs> What room would this have been? Also, we took the Do You Remember Love appearance of them across. That's what I said. Doctor, I don't remember. Look, they're just knocked down. 
Well, I mean, now it's obvious that something's happened. Otherwise, I can't explain the two guys in the hallway. I'm just saying, I don't think it was implied well enough to somebody who, again, compared it to a Pink Floyd concert. Break into back door. <laughs> what a great command. Why are they shooting at him? To prevent him to saving saving her, I guess? Right, but I thought Sharon wanted him. So wouldn't she be like trying to capture him somehow? Also, if the light show is the hypnotism, couldn't she just hit him in the face with the light show? Dude, you have a machine gun. Oh, there you go. I had to strike with the table first. By the way, this really makes the Macross look bad. Yeah. The machine gun <laughs> took out all the... Ugh. Remember when we were in space? Everyone yeah, dead. but they also have... The, remember, if this takes it the, uh, the 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 face of the new Macross, and Macross would you know would have doors that would cover the glass. Which no idea why they're not coming on. I guess Sharon didn't want them to come on, but also implies Sharon would have been safe against the fighter. Very naked Sharon. I mean, it's a hologram. Yeah, well, there's three versions of her. Four. Four versions of her. この世の人々一人一人に<笑> そんな馬鹿げた感動なんてどこにもないわ。イサムが求めたのは遥かな空よ。命がけで大空に挑んだと生と死の狭間で。<笑> The difficulty when the greater emotional understanding comes from the AI that was literally just born yesterday. I mean, one could argue that as she was still evolving while she was connected to, to she her, has her last. She has been connected to Miyun since the AI chip was put in. Yeah, but how many, I mean, okay, yeah, but just because that was the last piece, but she was still connected to Myung even before that. And yeah, remember, again, in the in the concert, she was the one who reacted to. I mean, the only thing that was connected to her was her emotional parts of her brain. I don't know. This is all coming off negative. Sure, piping the radio in here? Yeah.
What was that? Did he eject into himself? No, he rammed it. Oh, something came... Oh, never mind. What the... the shit that I don't understand could fill a book. I guess, thank God, the 90s didn't understand cloud computing. Otherwise, Sharon would be invincible right now. Yeah, I was gonna say, he, what, he would be mind controlled, right? She's really going out of her way to kill uh, Isamu for wanting to have him. Especially, I guess, she can mind control him anytime she wants, it seems. Hello, Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Myung is just immune to the mind control aspect. Because she's been surrounded by Sharon for a long time now, too. Well, I mean, he was the one that was empowering it, I guess? Well, no, I don't mean like in the past. I mean like within the last episode. She's been... Yeah surrounded by these light illumination things. God knows where they're being broadcast from. And that's why the next seven Macross series are all Sharon music videos. <laughs> the human race rots away in mind control bliss. Yeah, I have no idea why Sharon connected the radios together. Or their radios. Just made a radio in this room and connected it to them. God forbid you're not into the music of Sharon Athens. You have no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> well, thank God we filled that machine with explosives, I guess. Sharon is disappointed with you. Sharon is dead. Why did the power go out? Macross has already been disconnected from the city. 
Yeah, because the Macross is not, not giving power to the city. No, right? no, the Macross had already taken off. It wasn't connected when he crashed into it. Yeah, but when well, the power went out because it Macross was controlling the the, the city net, data networks. They, they said that earlier. Well, I understand that Sharon had taken over everything, but the power being on doesn't seem like it should turn off when she dies. Just her, kind of over just her data control. overload. I don't a know. Data overload. There's a lot of stuff not getting explained anymore. And then he gets court martial, I suppose, because oh yeah, there's no happy endings. I guess Myung has the least unhappy ending, only because she's not really culpable for any of this. No. The guy who, although the guy who did committed suicide, so she got nobody to testify on her behalf. And if they're gonna look for somebody to finger for this, well, the first episode started with dedicated to the pioneers, so. All right. At least they didn't pull a gold showing up at the final moment. Oh, I did eject. I did survive. No. He uh, sacrificed himself. That was my confusion when I was watching him, is that I saw the thing come out from his uh, jet as it was going up, and it looked like he ejected. And then that thing goes right into the jet. So it's like, did he eject into himself? That was something that a lot of people have actually thought, hey, that's exactly what happened, that he ejected before collection, but yeah, no. Well, you pointed out that he was fighting the drone, and it was like, okay, well, I guess the drone just wasn't where I thought it was. So. Yeah, no, again, I'm just not happy with the uh, mind control thing. Because what you apparently so clearly read as mind control just looked to me like a bunch of druggies at a concert, which is not an unusual sight. So. Yeah, but everybody got. Unless everybody was I. <laughs> You know, Could be, you know. right? I mean, like I said, it's like a Pink Floyd concert, right? You go there, watch a light show, do something. I'm not a drug guy, obviously. I've said this many times before. Also, I think since this was only two episodes, it was like the second episode that they did a concert, right? Not the first episode? Yeah, the second episode. So it was two episodes, so I'm still getting used to the new art style, new narrative direction, that sort of thing. So it's like, okay, this is just how people are now, right? That's I'm just getting into the world building and I think this is how the people are so it's not like no they're all acting weird I'm thinking this is how the show is telling me people are so when that's your main conceit of the threat of the big bad <laughs> is that no people aren't that way I need more proof or evidence or narrative something telling me that I think you're the problem is that you're extrapolating something based on different art design? No, no, like, the world. Like, people people in SDF Macross acted uh -huh. differently because it's written differently. People in uh -huh. this show act differently because it's written differently. It's not okay. just the art yeah. style, it's everything. Also, it's 40 years in the future. So, or, no, it's like 31 30, years. 30 years. 30, 30, actually, 29. 2012 to 20, uh, 40. It's 20 something years in the future. So, everything is just a little bit different and i'm getting used to everything so at the very beginning of your second episode like you saying i'm extrapolating weird shit fair i am extrapolating everything well all i did during the first re uh two episodes was pay attention to background shit as i mentioned to you like um the back of the karaoke thing like are they doing a song about uh my boyfriend's a pilot to the backdrop of the unification war like i'm reading everything so anything that doesn't seem uh massively apparent just doesn't get viewed so to me people at a concert enraptured at the thing they paid to be at just doesn't seem so odd as to make me think what's going on here it just these people paid to be at a concert that they're enraptured by also, I haven't been shown any other concerts to know that what was normal for them to react to. I mean, you've seen uh, people in 
uh, Min May concerts. Yeah, 29 years ago. And I don't think the concert viewing would change that much. I mean, yeah, you have the holocaust. 29 concert. years, I don't know. Also, I we haven't gone through uh, the destruction of Earth either, so obviously I'm having a hard time putting my mind into that space. But, you know, people in Min May concerts are fucking crazy too. What are you talking about? Yeah, but they clap and they cry out her, uh, you know, her name and stuff like well, that. Most so. people were like fucking on the verge of tears at that first concert. So yeah, I mean, they did. They seemed like they were fucking obsessed. So I don't know. Like I said, I didn't read anything into that first one. And just Asamu being like the outsider again because he comes from uh what from Earth to Eden and then out into the galaxy again and he comes back. He's already seemed like a weird character to me, which I mentioned a few times. So having him act differently amongst a bunch of other people didn't really stand out. Also, scientist guy who's staring at Sharon all the time isn't, like, hypnotized or anything either. Well, I think he is. He's, like, he stays, you know... Well, he's hacking he the thing. He's actively hacking the thing, not blankly staring up, like, in a drug daze. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess... That being a major thing kind of ruins the end for me, since I don't know what the hell is going on. Because my thought was like, okay, the Sharon in cahoots with the UN, and that the UN's trying to take over, and that's why we have armed guards now running around doing stuff. Because that's where my mind goes once we get into the hallway scene. Because I would... I don't think if you weren't here, I don't think I would ever figure out what the hell's going on. Like... <laughs> Obviously, I think we've lost a lot of viewers near the beginning of the episode where I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? And then getting unhappy that I don't understand, which I think is a normal response to to viewing a thing you've invested time in and then not like, figuring, fi thinking that you've been duped or I don't know. I think you understand where I'm coming from, right? At the very least, even if you don't understand why I don't understand. I mean, you don't, not everybody gets the same information or is willing to accept the premises that's given. Right? Just because I'm willing to accept it doesn't mean you have to accept it. I don't know. It's a, a concept of premise, though. I get the, the premise once you've explained to me, oh, they're all under mind control. I understood the premise and then I started applying that to everything after. Like, why isn't the everybody flying around looking at the hologram being mind controlled? Because that's the new premise. I didn't get the setup, which is the part that I hate. Because I love it when a show sets stuff up and pay off uh, before, I guess for the audience on this one, before me and Lessons come together to uh, record in the afternoon, I'm recording with Justin. We recorded Fearin on uh, this day that we record. And literally that's all I talked about with Justin this morning was I love how Fearin is setting stuff up and then paying it off later in the series. So I'm l actively looking for these kinds of things, but if I don't know something has been set up, like the concert thing, man. And I think I, I, I've patently explained why I'm not happy with the, the relationship thing. Because it's just like, oh, we're friends now. Here's all the things we went through. And now I'm going to explain the unreliable narrator position of that one flashback. I think if they were just at each other's throats the whole time, no flashback whatsoever, I would have been happier with that. Because that flashback ruined me for episode one, had it sitting in my head in episode two. Episode three, I'm just wanting the solution to it to become about. And episode four, it's an unhappy resolution to what, what happened in episode one. Define unhappy's resolution. Me, I'm unhappy. I'm not ah, saying, okay. yeah, okay. All You're points of view, with the resolution. all points of You're view are my own alone. I am not representing. Yeah. I'm not representing lessons here. I'm not representing anybody other than myself. I am unhappy you, with the resolution. You didn't find it satisfactory to what was set up, basically. I like the unreliable narrator uh, trope when it turns out to be like a rug pull sort of thing, and I. I guess maybe it's an element of me not liking the characters as much. I think we've uh, stated uh, enough times that emotional resonance is a major thing for me. But emotional resonance has to allow me to at least understand the characters 
in a way that makes me want to support them, be fans of them. And these characters, as I said, are like Melrose Place. Like, for you, if you, for you, a soap opera, right? They're not characters that I feel anything for. I feel bad for Min May when Hikaru chooses Misa over her. At the same time, I feel happy for Misa because I can follow these characters in separate paths. Their drama doesn't push me away from them. Their drama makes me want to see what happens next. My drama for these characters wasn't for their future. My drama of these characters is what happened in their past. So all of their future actions are driving me away from the only thing that's keeping me interested in them. And then doing a rug pull on that thing is not helping me at all. I think... I mean, when I first saw it, in fact, to me, I actually liked it because it's like, oh, so this is what's really happening. I, and the fact that they they were able to resolve it. And then it hit me in the fields when, you know, gold sacrifices himself. Like, yeah, I'm going to fight. I'm going to sacrifice myself because ultimately he, all of them are carrying the weight of trying in many ways to protect each other. It doesn't look that way. And the game and the, and the move and the OVA doesn't really sell you on that, but ultimately, okay, we know this happened. We didn't bring it up to you. We're not going to put it in your face because you know that it's a traumatic experience for you, right? For all of us, right? And we know that you didn't, you know, it, it seems to be that both Isamu and and Neon understood that that was something that was, un that he didn't want to do it and it was uncontrolled and he was... I mean, I understand you what you're getting at here just with the whole the medicated thing, but I mean, I understand mm -hmm. what you're saying. They're all trying to protect each other. Isamu is, well... Golg is trying to protect uh, Meun. Meun from Isamu. Isamu is trying to protect Meun from Golg. Meun is trying to protect herself from the past. And each other. Well, I guess the, Meun is also trying to protect Golg from what happened that he doesn't seem to remember. But the fact and, is that nothing is indicated also, to us that he doesn't remember a thing or that they're motivated by trying to protect him from a thing he doesn't remember. And also the way I understood it was I think that in fact Miyun and may maybe remember it from some other source, we will be seeing the movie, which kind of expands a couple of things. So maybe I shouldn't be saying a lot. Well, I mean may, the movie it. has a chance to resell me on this now that I have the entire concept down and I'm not going to like I said, I may have ruined it for myself by being thrown by the flashback in the first episode and then focusing all of my attention on the relationships based on that flashback. That's why the uh, the unreliable narrator thing ruins it for me. It's because I ruined so much of the show for myself, focusing on this one thing, and then that's the reveal for it. And also, I would say that and a, lot, a lot of people don't like dubs, although I did like the dub of this show, and because I, I watched both of them in English. Back then, I didn't care about the difference between, you know, subs and dubs. Uh and probably the way they did it in the in the dub version kind of they kind of they do a little what happens with a lot of dubs they do a little over explaining right you know the characters might say oh my god in in, in japanese and in english like oh my god you did this thing right partly to fill in you know the uh, you know, space, but also because they want to make sure that the you know the western audience actually gets what's happening or right? at a narrator yeah, in this case, this, I, I don't remember. Oh, can you imagine actually, a narrator no. in the cross plus? No, there's no narrator there. No, so, so can you um, imagine one though? So I'm just joking yeah. around. Yeah. So it might be that I'm what I'm remembering might be from that filler information, or I might be misremembering from the movie as well, who may or may not have more or less elements added to it. Like I said, the movie has a chance to resell me now that I can put everything back into perspective. Like I said, I went through the notes. My notes say, my notes show, I hope anyway, to anybody who's watching this, that I understood what was going on. Obviously, not the concert. Like I said, I went through and rewatched all of this, and the concert meant nothing to me again. And obviously, they don't mention anything about trying to cover for a past event that Golg doesn't remember, or Golg any, going over anything about missing memory. Like, I focused on the relationship when I was taking my notes to try and make sure that I picked up everything, which is why I focused, when I told about the notes, about the whole medical condition being an excuse for things. But if you look at the... Okay. 
when we see the last flashback, we see it from the point of view of Gold, right? And he's coming up the stairs, opens the door. They're talking, right? He gets angry, punches Isamu, then rips off the, the shirt from, um, from Mayung, and then looks at the mirror and goes like, like, oh my God, what have I done? But the past remembrance were after that, where Isamu is, you know, holding um, Mayung by the shoulders, like comforting her. But we're seeing it from the point of view of, of gold, gold, Bowman. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the difference between the two flashback perspectives doesn't change anything in my mind. I think what it was done, it was designed to let you believe that Gold walked into the situation and, and Isamu was the aggressor. See, see, that's the problem then, that I had is that apparently, like I said in episode one, is that I thought Isamu was a, mm, right? Because the scene looks more like what? Well, you said aftermath. hands on shoulders reassuringly. Doesn't read that way when you just walk into a room and someone's clothes are half torn off, which is why I instantly toss around. Yeah, yeah, because it looks like the scene of a struggle. But that's why I instantly thought ill of Asamu and would not associate myself with somebody who would be like that. So for two episodes, I'm actively distancing myself from liking anything about this character. Right, and I I feel like anybody who would think the same thing as me, seeing that image, would agree. You don't associate with that. So, for two half the half of the OVA, I don't like this main character. Now, Gold doesn't do himself any favors to be a likable person, because all his shit is just like about Mihun or getting one over on Asamu, which I guess, from the perspective of somebody who's trying to actively hate. Well, the guy who you think did that thing, that Golg would sell you, but Golg is drab, dry character. He's he's the serious business to what Asamu's would be party time, right? So you have drab, boring business guy or possible sex offender. And those are my two options well, to like the show. Well, with. because it's playing to the classic romantic trope of the it's trying to subvert them as well. The boring but safe guy, protective guy, and the wild guy who's pushing the the, the you know the envelope and all that, but has a dark past. And then, of course, at the end, it's like, well, no, you know, right? Again, it's the aspect that it. I thought X had happened that ruined the entire show for me. Right again, I as I explained, I I put the characters in an entirely different perspective, and one that did not allow me to actively try to enjoy them. And also, I think when I was much younger and I saw this, I originally didn't. I I read that there had been a struggle, but I did not, you know. And I guess the show maybe was trying to sell you that, or maybe not, or trying to be ambiguous enough. It didn't read exactly like an essay. Right. Well, as somebody who has gotten enough comments to see, why do you even think that before? I could see where it might the show might not have indicated been trying to indicate that, but for me, it clearly, clearly did. I don't know why why Gold gets pissed off and wants to rip a woman's clothes off. It's not a good thing, even in his new memory, right? Oh, certainly, so, it's not good. It's not good. Yeah, it's why is that the uh, first thing you want? To, one, don't lay your hands on the her at all. Especially if you love her and think that this is going on, take out on Asami, I guess. I don't know. There's no good way to say it, go about this. But to include that in the very first episode is to make, is to, you know, polarize me completely. It's a crazy person who sees that and then tries to, uh, you know, I still like this Asami character. I don't know. I don't care what he did. You know? That is fucking insane. If you say that about any character in any anime or TV show or anybody in real life, I support the sex offender. No, that's insane. So, I mean, if you're going to look, I know most of the people have already left. If you're still here listening and you're getting ready to comment and you haven't commented already for some insane reason, just know, don't <laughs> hate me for my takes. That makes sense without that aspect, right? I'm, well, I know I mean, I'm going to get hate from this series no matter what. 
it's not you I'm, I'm not gonna say that you are wrong because you're not oh you know you don't have to a thousand other people will yeah, yeah, yeah. no I, I would not say that because just because i didn't see that doesn't mean that it's not there after all we do have it i mean he doesn't even punch her even kick her he just rips her shirt off right so it's like how the you know i mean come on why do that right Especially when you already know yes. that he's wrecked the room, too, which means it wasn't yeah. just a random ah thing, right? They threw yeah. everything all over the place. He already raged out, and then why? No, 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 no. No, no. He first seems to have done that, got into a shock, and perhaps in his way out, he... It doesn't he, make he, any real sense in the, uh, the post-memory thing, because it... Then the implication is, saw himself in the mirror, what the fuck am I doing? Then raged out on the room? I mean, he already had been raged out. That's why he punched Isamu. Well, no, he he charges ripped. in, because we see it through the, the crack in the door. He charges in, yeah. pulls Isamu off, punches him. He was flying off screen. Then grabs Miyun, drags her over to the dresser, rips her shirt open, looks up into the mirror... But there was a lot more destruction we saw of the room in the first flashback in the first episode. So he had to have done more, even after or realizing. Maybe, or maybe when he punches Amu, he just, you know, Samu just tumble over I mean, something. Fair, and maybe, but it was like a couch, and we saw stuff in front and, of the and, couch. And, and that's the problem when you're dealing with memories and, you know, sort of dreamland situation where it's like you're not given enough information. And specifically when uh, a director is trying to set up a, uh, or bait you into believing one thing and not doing another thing. Because, again, an unreliable narrator, in this case, un unreliable point of view. That should be because we're, we're, there's no words exchange. He's not telling us. Um, and that's also part of the problem with the scene, right? It is designed to create that, you know, gotcha moment at the end. Oh, you thought this was this way, but no, it turns out it wasn't. And I think you're right. The fact that the story hangs everything on that point of view early on, it's a problem. Either way, because it's not well executed. It's like at the last F tw episodes 28 of 36 of SDF Macross were entirely based on something that happened in Phantasm, right? And you're like, there's a, some really upsetting reveal at the end of episode 36 that Phantasm set up. And you are like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I don't know. Obviously, I'm I'm culpable for the whole hypnotism thing because I just didn't see that at all. Yeah, I mean, I think the way reason why I saw it is because I I already seen it. So of course I I knew what was going to happen. So when I went to the console, like, aha, there's the clue. But it's one of those things is it's a clue after the fact, right? Because the first time I probably would have missed, I probably missed it as well. It's like, oh, oh, he's he's acting weird. And only after I saw the end, it's like, oh, wait a minute, they're hypnotized. So when I saw it again, it's like, aha, that happens to be a foreshadowing. I guess you also because uh, they don't do anything. Right? All these people are yeah. like in a trance, sure. Also, I don't have any other real life holographic concert experience, so I can't tell what people are like during during one of those things. But they don't do anything either. So yes. why would I think they're maybe the maybe the concert puts them into a trance? At the most extreme is what I might think. I didn't tell this time, obviously. But they didn't do anything. Also, those two guys in the hallway with the guns were very with it for being uh, hypnotized versus everybody else who, like uh, Yang, who struggles to move the gun, even though he's like real happy about it at the same time. Did Yang survive? Yeah, he got ejected. He got ejected, but he was hypnotized. Does he have the wherewithal? Does Sharon even no, no. care to make him pull an escape no, shoot? We, we literally see, first of all, modern ejection seats are fully automatic. So once you eject, you don't do anything other than just stay, keep yourself as... And Does we that actually also apply a, to a, a to Valkyrie? Parachute. Okay, I didn't see a parachute, okay. Yeah, there was a parachute. I was about to say, because a Valkyrie is designed also to uh, be in space, so it doesn't make any sense I mean, to automate a parachute in space. Uh, no, but you probably have some kind of sensor. I mean, if, for example, an uh, air pressure sensor, if you escape and there's literally no air pressure outside, then you don't activate the the, the parachute. Okay, so did Raymond survive? Raymond... Marley? Let's see. Was he even uh, there? I don't even no, remember. That. No, all, all that happens in... Remember, the, the owner gets shot in the head. 
the producer, you know, the the, the... Well, Raymond was the owner. Well, he was the yeah, he, he was got... so he is dead. Okay. Yeah, he got shot in the head basically. Okay, I didn't remember him at Look, I was trying to cover so much shit that I obviously did not understand that I yeah. forgot if he was even there. Yeah. Okay. They're dead. Sharon's obviously dead. I say obviously, like I said, thank God the 90s didn't understand cloud computing. Otherwise, Sharon would exist everywhere on every server. Be a whole Skynet situation. If Skynet could also, you know, hypnotize people. Uh, let's see. Gold is dead. Lucy's on a different planet. Yeah, he survived. Samu survived. Yeah, sorry, I have been so much in our conversation for the last bit that I've kind of already forgotten how the show ended. Kate and Morgan are on a different planet, and color, uh, Colonel Billiard Johnson is a survivor. Awesome. Okay. So, that covers Macross Plus, unless the movie kills some more people. Or introduces <laughs> some more people. Yeah, I think the movie is a um, a, a bit of an expansion on this. It doesn't, I don't think it, if I remember correctly, and I could be wrong, commenters will tell us, might tell us otherwise, it might expand a little bit and give more more context, but it's really just a movie version of the OVA, so yeah. All right. It isn't as it isn't as radical a change between Do You Remember Love and SDF Micros. All right, cover me on this one. Uh, the relationship between Asamu and Gold. Obviously, it's right. no longer antagonistic. I mean, they're, no, they're friends. You know, green? You're saying green? Okay. Yeah. I mean, he literally said, "Oh, let's have a." You know, I was planning to have a drink with us, all three of us, back in Eden. But I mean, yeah. fair. It's just such a weird relationship that uh, I was tempted to go white, like unknown. I have no idea. I think if they survived, I think Gold would have still punched somebody. But then I mean, again, true. he hasn't taken his medication in a while. He is a planet away from his medication. Uh, so, did Asami love Myung? Yeah. Okay, and did not love Lucy? No. Okay, so I'll change all of those to green. And, and the I'm... planet did not get glass, so that's also everybody on Earth survived. Well, to be fair, two out of three series do not feature <laughs> Earth being glassed. Yeah. So now we have a lot more options for glassing. All right. Well, you have any final thoughts before I get eviscerated in the comment section? Uh, I'm hoping that the movie actually does clarify some things. Again, it's a bit of a blur because I'm melding the. OVA with a movie, so I'm not really sure what happens in the movie that's any different. I'm sure the moment I start watching, we're like, aha! But by that time... Even right. if it doesn't, right. even if it's just the same thing in a encapsulated format, it'll still basically be like a brand new watch for me, considering how much everything in the final episode recontextualized the first three episodes. Yeah. I, I am unhappy with how I viewed the episode... I would not be pleased with this reaction series. So hey, it's okay. Hey, hey, don't worry about it. But look, I know I'm not responsible for liking everything I watch. It's just not how media works. I'm just saying that I look. I get. We'll just do the wrap up now. <laughs> I have been Theta. This is Lessons. This has been uh, Macross Plus. We will catch you next time. Bye bye. Bye. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another Stoneface Reactions. If you have an idea of another video we could go ahead and watch, go ahead and put it in the comments down below and we'll add it to the wheel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let us know what you thought about this video and what parts you liked. And until then, we'll see you next time. Is this too goofy?